Hello, and thank you for listening to today's episode of JTCast, the official podcast of the Journal of Athletic Training. I'm your host, Luke Donovan. For the second episode of the month, I'll discuss the findings of an article from the most recent issue of JT titled, Taylor Cartilage Deformation and Spatiotemporal Gait Patterns in Individuals with and Those Without Chronic Ankle Instability, authored by Dr. Kyle Kosick and colleagues from the University of Kentucky and Kaiser University flagship campus. As a reminder, the article discussed today can be found on the JAT website, natajournals.org. And please remember that all content from JAT is open access to all readers, thanks to the funding from the National Athletic Trainers Association. First step, surveying the scene. Lateral ankle sprains are the most common muscle skeletal injury, where approximately 40% of individuals who sustain a lateral ankle sprain develop a condition known as chronic ankle instability, or CAI. CAI is characterized by recurring lateral ankle sprains, perceived ankle instability, and frequent bouts of giving way at the ankle. CAI has been linked to numerous long-term consequences, such as reduced health-related quality of life, decreased physical activity, and the development of ankle osteoarthritis, or ankle OA for short. In fact, CAI has been reported to be the second most common cause of ankle OA. Identifying factors that may contribute to the link between CAI and ankle OA may highlight interventions or rehabilitation strategies that may decrease the likelihood of ankle OA following a lateral ankle sprain. Serial assessment of ankle cartilage from the index sprain to the development of ankle OA would offer valuable insight of the progression. To date, MRI is considered the gold standard tool to assess joint cartilage health. Unfortunately, MRIs are relatively inexpensive, which may prohibit routine assessment of ankle joint health. Ultrasonography, a more clinically accessible diagnostic tool, has emerged as a possible surrogate for MRI-based measures of Taylor cartilage. Previous studies have demonstrated that ultrasound can reliably measure cross-sectional area and cartilage thickness of the talus. Changes to these measures of compositional structure have been shown to occur in patients with CAI that do not present with gross morphologic degradation. As such, measures of cartilage thickness and volume may serve as early indicators of future osteoarthritis. Early works have indicated that Taylor cartilage undergoes large deformations during activities of daily living, such as walking. Individuals with CAI often demonstrate altered gait patterns, including spatiotemporal gait mechanics, when compared to individuals without a history of ankle injury. Many theorize that the altered gait mechanics cause abnormal loading and stress of the Taylor cartilage, which in return may lead to ankle osteoarthritis. To date, no authors have examined the relationship between spatiotemporal gait parameters and cartilage deformation in patients with CAI. Determining this relationship may provide insight on the clinical utility of gait interventions that aim to alter spatial temporal gait parameters for combating the development of ankle OA among patients with CAI. Therefore, the authors aim to compare ultrasound measures of Taylor cartilage deformation in response to a standardized exercise protocol and spatial temporal walking gait parameters between individuals with and without CAI. 24 individuals with CAI and 24 individuals without CAI or history of ankle injury were enrolled in this study. First, participants were instructed to sit for 30 minutes to offload the joint prior to ultrasound measurements of the Taylor cartilage. After the 30 minutes, the researchers took three ultrasound images using a standardized testing position. Following the ultrasound testing, participants completed a standardized exercise program. Immediately after completing the exercise program, the participants had their Taylor cartilage reassessed. These procedures allowed the clinicians to determine whether cartilage composition differed between groups before loading and whether the group's cartilage composition responded differently to the repeated bouts of loading. Next, participants completed walking trials where they had spatial temporal parameters such as their stride length, step length, cadence, and walking speed recorded. Here are the results. The group with CAI had greater Taylor cartilage deformation than the uninjured group. For the spatial temporal gait parameters, there were no differences between groups and there were no significant relationships between any spatial temporal gait parameter and measure of Taylor cartilage. When comparing the results of this study to previous studies, the authors found that following a standardized exercise protocol, this ultrasound-based method found a similar change in cartilage deformation as studies that used MRI to assess cartilage. 
In addition, early studies have shown no differences in cartilage morphology during a resting state when comparing individuals with and without CAI. Considering these findings, researchers have suggested that alterations of the compositional structure in absence of differences in cartilage morphology may reflect the early pathogenesis of ankle OA among patients with CAI. The results of this study further support this hypothesis, given that the group averages for the resting state ultrasound measurements before and after the standardized protocol were fairly similar. However, the percent deformation significantly differed between the two groups. The authors did not observe differences in spatial temporal parameters between groups as previously reported in the literature. The authors attribute the lack of significant findings due to the subtle methodological differences between data collection. One example being the decision to have the participants wear shoes during the gait assessment to better reflect clinical practice. Furthermore, no correlation was found between spatial temporal gait parameters and measures of ultrasound composition. One possible explanation could be that the exercise protocol was not specific enough to reflect the deformation observed during repetitive walking. Overall, the individuals with CI had a greater increase in Taylor cartilage deformation when measured using ultrasonography when compared to a group of individuals with no previous ankle injury following an exercise program. The findings of this study further suggest that ultrasonography may be an effective strategy to assess joint health over time in individuals who stay in a lateral ankle sprain. Future studies should continue to explore gait parameters that may be related to cartilage deformation patterns to further develop effective rehabilitation strategies to decrease the rate in which individuals with CAI develop ankle osteoarthritis. Well, that's it for today's JAT cast. Please remember to rate and subscribe to the podcast, which is available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and Stitcher. You can find out more information about upcoming podcasts and other JAT events on our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts at JAT underscore NATA. Thank you for listening and keep a lookout for next month's JAT cast.